You're tuned in to Ask the Master Auto Technician. Car questions? Get answers right now. Call 850-763-0555. James Auto Center. We fix it right. Guaranteed. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. Welcome back. Thank you very much for tuning back in and watching Ask the Master All Technician. We, we talk a little more about car. We talk about cars. We talk about plumbing, too, because one of our sponsors is Scott Hobbs from Mr. Reuter Plumbing. And Scott mentioned that we got cold weather coming, which I don't like cold weather, but still we got it coming. And Scott, you were telling me on the email that something happens to your electric water heater. Some, something happens when cold weather happens. And what, what are you talking about? Cold weather destroys electric water heaters or helps make them go bad or hang around with the wrong people? Or? Okay. Well, <laughs> well they, were going, they were going bad on their own. And then <laughs> what we find is this colder weather, mm -hmm. uh, it really kind of uh, is the straw that breaks the camel's back. Uh, you know, we get a lot of water heater calls this time of the year as we, as we get a cold snap. Uh -huh. and, and, I, you know, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know if it's, because the water coming in is colder All right. or because folks are using more hot water and they're, they're overtaxing the water heater. Hmm. Um, but the, the elements, you know, will blow. Uh, if one was going to leak, uh, it usually starts to leak, you know, during this time. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a time for folks to really, you know, take a look at their water heater. Some manufacturers will have a, a manufacturer's date on the water heater. Right. They know it's beyond the manufacturer's warranty. It's really time to start budgeting for a new water heater. So well, it's not a matter of if it's going to leak; it's a matter of when it's going to leak. Okay, I don't know how long the average water heater lasts. I have no idea because when I was a kid, I thought water heaters lasted. I don't think I ever remember ever changing one till I was an adult. Uh, you know, they last. I remember 20... Thanksgiving. We had to. That's true. We did have one on time. We did have one. Yes, we did. That was the first one I ever changed. It was Thanksgiving weekend. We had company come over, and I walked out in the garage, and there was a half inch of water in the garage. Isn't that something? Yeah, and, and thank God it was outside because we had wood in the house, you know, wood floors, and if that leaked in the right. house, we'd have been in a world of trouble. We didn't even have a, a pan. I don't know if it had done any good. Uh, you know, right now I think they were. Uh, we yeah, have, the the builder didn't. Yeah. Yeah, you're supposed to have a pan underneath them, a catch pan. I don't know if it would have done any good because that stuff was leaking out just as fast as it was going in, just about. But what are some of the things that people need to look for? you know, on a water heater, besides the date it was made and how old is old before you need to think about changing it. Right. Well, you, you can look around, um, just, just look at the jacket. There's a jacket on the outside of the tank. There's a tank on the inside. Right. And then there's a jacket on the outside. Start looking around to see if you see any, any rust spots, mm -hmm. any rust drips. Uh, those are indications because what will happen is a, a weep hole will start to... to uh, weep water out mm -hmm. and then as it heats up and the and the chemical changes thermal expansion and so forth it'll seal back up you know, ah. sediment in the water Just iron or whatever it'll seal back up and then it'll break loose when the pressure increases or the weather temperature changes and it, and then it closes back up and then over time it just you know, like a cancer, it just erupts. Well, it's just so, like a radiator um, in a car. Radiators do the oh, same thing. That's sure, a perfect sure. example. Uh, we don't normally see them leak on us. I mean, a customer, the biggest, uh, when they're in town, they're just driving around, but when they get on the highway, the biggest complaint that AAA gets is, besides cars running out of gas, is overheating. Uh, because the radiators will leak because they're not used to maintaining that constant highway speed of 70, 80 miles an hour on the highway, then all of a sudden it, it knocks loose all the sediment that's blocking the leak, and the next thing they know, they've lost a gallon and a half of water and there are 250 degrees in the red light on and a blown up engine. Uh, sure. yeah. Wow, I didn't think about that. That's probably what yes. happened. So water heaters are, are really kind of, like you say, you need to pay attention to small little indicators that you're having problems. Right, and then the other thing you can do, if you, there, typically in modern water heaters, right. there's two elements. There's an upper and a lower element. And if you feel like, hey, I'm running out of water, hot water sooner than I used to, mm -hmm. uh, you, you're, you're probably not imagining things. Maybe one of the elements have blown and it's not keeping up with the demand. So that's the time to have, you know, a professional come out, check it out. Um, you know, we talked about last week, mm -hmm. we have the customer advantage plan where we come out on an annual basis and do it. Um, a plumbing checkup for you, do a visual on it. And those are some of the things that we look for to try to help people identify problems before they become, you know, a ruining a hardwood floor problem. Mm. 
So, you know, I used to I used to say when I first did the radio, started doing the radio show back in 1998, you need to be on a first name basis with your doctor, your lawyer, your minister, and your auto technician. But as I'm starting to get a little bit older, you need to be on a first name basis, including your plumber, because if I you're- I would <laughs> say so, yes. <laughs> because if you don't have a plumber, you can call, you know, if you have an emergency, like on a Thanksgiving day, uh, you know, when company's coming over, uh, you know. Well, and I like Scott's idea of preventative, preventative maintenance. maintenance. I like because it too. Because there's nothing worse than, like you say, in the middle of the night, something goes out. Yes. Or while you have a whole house full of people. But oh, sure. having yeah, someone come. Yeah, that's very embarrassing when you have <laughs> yeah. family over and yeah, they say, well, don't you yeah. take care of your stuff around here? Well, you know, normally I do, but it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. I mean, most people don't even know where their, well, I shouldn't say that. Most people probably don't even know where their water heater is. So what's the average lifespan of a water heater and the parts? Because I know like you have elements, and elements sometimes have to be replaced more frequently than the tank itself. Well, you know, that's that's something that, that nobody can really say, mm. only because uh, water conditions are different, mm -hmm. um, the, the usage is different, and uh, the water pressures are different in different locations. My grandfather had a water heater in his house. He was on well water. It was mm -hmm. obviously perfect water, and it, it lasted almost 40 years before he ever changed it out. And we're changing out water heaters now, sometimes six, seven, eight, ten years old. Mm. I, always, I always tell folks if it's outside the manufacturer's warranty, go ahead and start budgeting for a replacement. Wow. Because yeah, it, that's a and, great idea. Yeah. And, he, and here's the reason why. They're inside the water heater, the manufacturer puts a sacrificial anode rod inside the water heater. And what that does is kind of like the, uh, the zinc that you see on, the, on a boat motor right. that goes out in the salt water. It's a sacrificial metal. Right. And when that metal it, is gone, it starts, the, the corrosive elements in the water start to attack the tank. If there's, they find any fissure in that glass mm -hmm. lining, they will start to attack that because that sacrificial metal is gone. Mm. So we don't know really depending on how long, you know, what kind of water conditions we have, how long that anode rod will last. Well, that's important because, you know, what you're talking about is very, very similar to uh, car radiators. We tell people, please, if you're in an emergency situation, you can use well water or city water, but, you know, just get you where you need to be. But you really should be using distilled water because if you don't, it ends up causing all, it ends up making electricity and chewing things up. And I guess you're saying the same thing. It's, it's this, this water heater uh, is actually getting cor uh, corroded from all the materials that are in the uh, water actually corroding things up because you're creating a little factory, a little uh, chemical factory in there, and it's eating things up because of the type water. Uh, maybe city water might be more corrosive than, say, a deep well from the, in the country is what maybe one of the things you're saying, because I know they put fluoride, chloride, halicidic acid, all these things inside there, sure. and I know that they're corrosive to aluminum. You know, fluoride, chloride, that's, it, it's, it's a salt. And it's going to do this, and if it's corrosive to aluminum, it's going to be corrosive to other metals as well. So maybe city water is more caustic on, well, uh, on heaters, you think? Or is that just maybe? It, well, it, and it could be, and, and here's another thing, thermal expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, when that water heater heats up, there, there's thermal expansion is created. And years ago, we didn't put thermal expansion devices or thermal expansion tanks mm -hmm. on a hot water system to absorb that thermal expansion. But now we do, it's required by code. The manufacturers started recommending it years ago, and then the, now it's written into the code that it's required. So if you have an older water heater that doesn't have a thermal expansion device, that tank is taking all of that thermal expansion, and it's a glass lining. So imagine a porcelain lining, you know, you know moving and, mm -hmm. and stretching as you have thermal expansion. It's gonna crack that lining over time. Well, I know the best way to solve this problem, Scott. I know the best way. Just buy you a return, <laughs> buy, buy you a uh, tankless water heater. Uh, I tell you, is, is there any maintenance on them other than just draining them once a year? Is that about the only maintenance you have on those and back flushing them? They should be back flushed on an annual basis. The, the even even a tank type. If, don't don't start if it's ten years old. Or <laughs> even if it's three or four years old. But so, if you start when it's brand new, go ahead and flush it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a Basically, it's just a vinegar solution that we run through those tankless water heaters, right. and, it, and it takes all that calcium and that scale that builds up on that heat exchanger, and it 
and it breaks it up and flushes it on out so it doesn't become corrosive to the heat exchanger. Well, that's, that's some of those laws of physics out there you can't change. Even though people may not like them, there are certain laws of physics you can't change, and that is that if you've got water coming inside it, it's going to leave deposits, and you can go in there and use with a little chemistry lab and actually null, uh, erase those deposits uh, by using vinegar and water just like you would on your uh, coffee pot at the house. It does that's the same thing. Right. Sure. It, it does the same thing, and that's something that's very important early on a Tuesday morning. I need more coffee to stay awake over here. But, uh, hey, I, I haven't had my first one yet. So I, I, you done, you done real good. I appreciate it. Scott, I want to yeah, thank thanks. you so much for being on here, and I look forward to you next week talking a little bit more about preventive maintenance because, you know, we got the holidays here. They're coming up, and a lot of people are going to be leaving their homes to go out of town, and maybe what they can do to protect their homes while they're gone out of town. So give some hints next time on that. Okay, can we talk Sure that, about that before, but like I tell people, you have to hear something over and over and over again before it sinks in. Uh, sure. in, in before it becomes a habit. Yeah, that's right. It sure does. All right. That's Scott Haas from Mr. Reuter. Give him a call at 763-2001. Did I say that right, Scott? That's perfect. All right. 763-2001. Mr. Reuter over there on East Avenue. They'll take the problem away from you that you may have in your, in your septic system or in your plumbing. Just give them a call. 763-2001. Mr. Reuter. Hey, this is James Morris. If you've got a car question, call us at 850-763-0555. It is early. It is early on a Tuesday morning, and what we do is answer your car questions. We do this every day, Monday through Friday, on Fox 28 on WPGX, Fox 28, and all you got to do is just pick up that phone dial, 850-763-0555, and remember, the only dumb question is the one you didn't ask when I'm off there, and you got to wait till the following morning, or you got to wait till Monday or whatever, because I don't do this on weekends anymore. We've decided to go off the radio, because I've been, you know, I tell you what, I've been on the radio since 1998, and it's a lot easier for me just coming here and do a live show every morning and that way I can take care of cut people don't have to wait a week to talk to me or you know it used to be that's what they had to do wait a week now we've got so much just coming in this way and we want to help people out more and expand our business so what we decided to do is every morning you can call Fox 28 oh excuse me call James Auto Center between 6 and 6 30 at 763-0555 area code is 850 if you're new to town here and don't know the area code and we'll be more than happy to point you in the right direction and let you know what it's going to take to maybe get your car fixed and as always, test drives are free at James Auto Center. That don't cost anything but 15 minutes of your time. And then we'll be able to tell you how much time or how much money that we think is going to be able to diagnose and possibly repair your car. Sometimes we just look at your car and go, that's easy. All you need to do is that, 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 and we can take care of that while you wait. And then sometimes like, we need some time to figure this one out. It's not that easy. Hey, this is James Morris. Give us a call 850-763-0555 tomorrow morning. Bye-bye, everybody. James Auto Center, we fix it right, guaranteed, beep, 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 yeah.